Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. You know, scientists are continually working to bring us greater efficiency and more speed in aircraft. And so in tonight's play, No Highway in the Sky, we tell you the story of a rather absent-minded scientist who, because of one transoceanic flight, found himself the most talked-about man on two continents. As the stars of this intensely absorbing drama from 20th Century Fox Studios and recreating their original roles, we have one of the most capable actors on the screen, James Stewart, and one of the most glamorous women in the world, Marlena Dietrich. Yes, glamour is an international word, just as Lux Toilet Soap is an international complexion care. Because lovely women everywhere who want fresh, lasting, new beauty depend on daily Lux facials. Now, no highway in the sky. Starring James Stewart as Theodore Honey and Marlena Dietrich as Monica Teasdale, with Evelyn Eaton as Marjorie Corder. One of England's proudest possessions is the aircraft establishment at Farnsborough, where some of the world's finest commercial planes have been developed. It's closing time, and one of the officials has just left the plant. With him is a scientist. Mr. Theodore Honey. It, it's uh, very kind of you to drive me home like this, but I assure you that yes, I... Yes, you told me several times, Mr. Honey. You could just as easily have taken the bus. I always go home on the bus. Mr. Honey, I'm rather curious about that experiment of yours in the vibration shed. Perhaps Sir John told you I've been away for several months, and now that I'm back, may I ask just what you're up to in there? Well, yes, yes, I'm vibrating. So I understand. Uh, the entire tail assembly of the new Rutland reindeer is suspended in midair, and you're vibrating it. Why, Mr. Honey? Well, I'm waiting for the tail to fall off. Oh, I see. But, but these planes are already in service. Yes, yes, they are, yes. Sir John tells me you're an American, Mr. Honey. Rhodes Scholar, eh? Yes, uh, I've been here for several years. I can't remember exactly how long I've been here. I... He's quite proud of you, Mr. Honey. He tells me you're invaluable. But what are you trying to do to our reindeer aircraft? Well, that's rather difficult to explain in words of one syllable. Well, I have managed as many as two syllables on occasion, Mr. Honey. Oh? Well, well, very simply, the purpose of my work has been to arrive at an end result for the original theoretical hypothesis of Kerslinger of Baal and Schilgard of Uppsala, in which they postulate vibration as a source of energy. Now, I reason that since this energy does not appear in any of the ordinary forms, such as heat or electrical potential, it must be absorbed by the metal itself, and that sufficient absorption would result in nuclear fission of the aluminum atom in an isotopic form with crystalline affinities. And what all that means is that the tail will fall off the aeroplane? Exactly, yeah. Oh, oh, here's where I live. Oh, you wouldn't care to come in. You... Oh, thank you, I'd like to. You would? Well, I, I'm afraid all I can offer you is some sherry. Well, that'd be very nice. It's probably not very good. I've had it quite a while. Well, perhaps it's time to see if it's suffering from fatigue. Oh, that couldn't happen to sherry. Oh, no, you see, sherry is... is uh, uh, what is... What is that's strange. I, I'm sure this is the right key. Well? Oh, Oh, I'm so sorry. This is the second time this week, Mr. Honey. Oh, yes, I... This, uh, this row of houses, they all look alike. <laughs> yes. Yes, they do, don't they? Yes, it's the one next door. You know, it's very easy to make such an error, you know. Uh, especially if you've just moved into the neighborhood. Oh, well, we've lived here 11 years. Oh, th this... <laughs> this, this is my house right here. I'm... I'm sure this is my... Good evening, uh, Father. I'm glad you're not late. I have everything planned for... Oh. Hello. Hello. You don't recall where we put the sherry, do you, dear? The top cupboard, behind the dishes. You said it would be out of Mrs. Higgins' way. Oh, the top cupboard. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, I remember perfectly. I have to put it up here behind the... Uh, oh. Yes, Father? It appears to be empty. I guess Mrs. Higgins found it after all. Well, I'll... Uh... I'll get some more. Please, I wish you wouldn't. Oh, no, that. no, it's no trouble at all. The shop's just around the corner. Uh, Elspeth, will you entertain Mr... Uh, I don't believe you told me your name. Scott. Scott, this is my daughter. I'll be right back. Well, Elspeth, now, all these books are your father's, I suppose. Oh, yes. They're all over the house. 
It's very difficult being a scientist. One has to think so much. Oh, I know, I know. When my father's working, I keep very quiet. And what about your mother? Does she help you keep quiet? My mother's dead, Mr. Scott. An air raid during the war. I'm very sorry, Elspeth. You, you must miss her very much. Yes, I do. My father does more, I think. Then what do you do when your father's not busy? Well, quite often we play games. He makes them up. For example, we play pyramidology. Pyramidology? It's based on the science of the Great Pyramid. And it's very scientific. The Great Pyramid is the only known architectural example of squaring the circle. That is, the area of the base is directly equal to that of a circle with the height of the structure. And while you were gone, Mr. Honey, Elspeth was telling me about the games you two play. Uh, very interesting. Of course, I don't have much time to spend with Elspeth, but she's quite good at being by herself. Her mind is really developing quite remarkably. Uh, Mr. Honey, I, I'd like to hear more about that tail falling off. Uh, when do you expect you'll know when the failure might occur? Oh, well, I've known that for some time. You know? Oh, yes, yes. The answer is 1,440 hours of flight. But thousands of aircraft have flown millions of miles without the tail assemblies falling off any of them because of vibration. Yes, yeah, yes, that's quite true. How long has your test been running, that tail assembly in the vibration shed? 832 hours, 14 minutes, and 7 seconds as of shutdown tonight. I... They don't allow me to run it more than eight hours a day. The people in the neighborhood complain about the noise. But didn't you give them your figure, 1,440 hours? Oh, no, no, no. I never include the tale in my preliminary report, Mr. Scott. Science is in no hurry. Whether, whether I reach, reach it a day or, or so later or earlier, it's of no importance. It could be vitally important to the 50-odd people who take off in these reindeers every day. No, now, Mr. Scott, you don't understand. I'm a scientist, and science is very exacting. It requires the utmost concentration. I can't be concerned with people. What do you... If a doctor is trying to find a cure for some disease, what would happen if he let himself be upset every time somebody got sick and died? He'd never get any work done at all. No, people must be somebody else's concern, Mr. Scott. I can't let them be mine. Yet these very people are the ones... No, no, no. I, I have nothing more to say at the present time. And now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'd better be getting home now. My hat. I, I thought I left my hat. When but, I... Mr. Honey, you live here. I... Uh, oh... Oh, I'm, I'm afraid I became upset, Mr. Scott, and when I'm uh, upset, it's very easy to forget where I am. I mean, I... Good, goodbye, Mr. Scott. Goodbye, Mr. Honey, and thank you for your time. And after I left Honey's home last night, Sir John, I came back here to the plant... I read the report on that reindeer that crashed in Labrador two months ago. Oh, yes. Uh, pilot error, I believe. Went straight into a hill, didn't he? I uh, looked up how many hours of flight that particular reindeer had prior to the crash. The estimate given is 1,407. You trying to prove Honey's theory for him? No, not quite. We seem to have several photographs of the wreckage, but oddly enough, there's no photograph of the tail assembly. They never found the tail assembly. Nothing unusual in that, I assure you. I still think another inquiry should be made. Very well, Mr. Scott. We'll take the taxpayers' money and send someone to Labrador to comb through that godforsaken country for a section of the tail spar. Is that what you want? Yes, sir. You don't know much about boffins, do you, Scott? Boffins, sir? Yeah, scientists, researchers, the lab men. In the first place, sir, a boffin has to be a bit balmy to be a boffin. Uh, yes, sir. Well, our Mr. Honey is typical. He tells us that reindeers will fall apart after 1,400 hours. If I made statements like that, they'd lock me up. Well, how long before that infernal vibration of his is due to prove something? Well, it'll be weeks yet, sir. And get it on a 24-hour basis today. And assign someone to handle the complaints when they start coming in. Very good, sir. How many hours have been flown by the other reindeers we've delivered? Oh, I doubt if any of the others has done more than 500, sir. Well, praise heaven for that. I shouldn't want the job of asking the airlines to ground their nice new ships. With no more to go on than what Mr. Honey says. Uh, well, about the man who will go to Labrador. Mr. Honey, of course. He started all this. Maybe a stiff climb up a hill will do him good. Still, he knows best what to look for, I suppose. Yes, sir. Uh, that's all, Mr. Scott. Tell Mr. Honey he's flying to Labrador immediately. <laughs> that 
have safety belts now, Mr. Honey. Here, let me help you. Oh, oh, thank you, stewardess. Oh, we'll serve dinner in about half an hour, but if you care for coffee or a sandwich... Well, I brought some sandwiches. My daughter made them. Her name's Elspeth. Uh, oh, well, they're, they're probably much better than ours. You're sure you didn't bring your own coffee? No, no, just sandwiches. I, miss, Miss, that, that woman over there, isn't that the film actress... Isn't that Monica Teasdale over there? Why, yes, she's crossed with us often. Uh, would you like me to take over your autograph book? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I, I don't even have one. No, no I, I wouldn't want to trouble her. I, uh... I'll be back with your coffee in, in just a moment. The coffee was very good, miss. Thank you. I've just been talking with the pilot, Captain Samuelson. I want to apologize, Mr. Honey. Apologize? Well, I had no idea you were an expert on aviation, and here I've been talking to you as if you'd never flown before. Oh, well, I haven't. I, what I know about airplanes is more when they're in pieces. Well, Captain... <laughs> Captain Samuelson said he'd like to show you the plane. They don't do that for everyone. These new reindeers are beautifully equipped. Reindeer? Is this a, a reindeer we're in? That's right. A nice, new, shiny one. Yes, I think I'd like to see it very much. Well, now that you've met the crew, Mr. Honey, let me tell you about our engines. Well, I don't suppose many things go wrong with them these days, do they, Captain? Almost never. We don't even use reconditions anymore. We get brand new ones every 600 hours. Uh, these happen to be our third set. Oh, about the Did you say the third set of engines? Yes, that's right, sir. I thought the reindeers were new on this Canadian run. Oh, they are, but this particular aircraft was one of the first off the line. We were loaned out for a while on the South American run. Well, for how long? Oh, Dobson, how many hours has this plane flown? According to the logs, sir, 1,422 up to takeoff today. 1,422? Yes, sir. Captain, Captain... Captain, I, I must speak to you alone. Now, at once. You seem Captain, disturbed, Mr. I am disturbed considerably. Now, where can we go? Well, uh, the baggage locker off, but why can't we... Captain, uh... please. Please hurry. I don't understand this at all, Mr. Honey. It's not that I doubt your calculations, but... I, I tell you that if this airplane has flown more than 1,400 hours, the tail assembly may fail at any moment. That's the reason I was on my way to Labrador right now to investigate. Investigate? That crash two months ago, that reindeer crashed at 1,407 hours within a few hours of my cal calculations. Less time than this plane has flown. Do you know for certain that the tail assembly failed? The tail assembly wasn't found with the wreckage. Oh, I see. Every minute we spend talking the about it, the matter Captain. is that all of this is just your opinion. Well, if you have any suggestions, uh... Yes, yes. You can cut the inboard engines to break up the vibration frequency and then turn back. Turn back... And if you don't turn back, this airplane's going to crash into the sea. And we're all going to be killed. I see. Well, I'll radio a full report of all you've told me. If London tells me to turn back, I will. Meanwhile, I'll cut the inboard motors, as you suggest. It'll make us late at Gander, but I'll take that responsibility. Gander, if if that's a Newfoundland. Yes, sir, I'm quite aware of that. But you told me you would radio London. I will. But there won't be anyone at the airport at this time of night to make a decision like that. My instructions will be to maintain the course. Very well, Captain. Let's wish ourselves luck. I didn't mean to disturb you, Miss Teasdale. I, I, my name's Honey, Theodore Honey, and I, I, I'd like to talk to you. Of course. I'd be very pleased. I, I've always, I mean, Mrs. Honey and I, we've always, had, I've always felt I owed you a great deal. Oh? Your pictures, they meant a lot to my wife, and I, that's why I want to talk to you. You're very kind, Mr. Honey. I'm afraid we're in very serious danger. The tail of this airplane may drop off at any moment. Is that so? Yes. Now, I've been looking around the plane, and when it happens, go to the men's room and sit on the floor. <laughs> now, it, the, the partition there is very rigid because the stove and the galley is bolted to the floor on the other side, you see? Bolted to the floor? Mm, it, I see. Yes, yes. Now, if you survive the initial impact, try to get on a life raft, and they may pick you up when they search for us in the morning. That's certainly very interesting. I'm to go to the men's room. Yes, that's right. Yes. And sit on the floor. Yes. And if I survive... Excuse me, Mr. Honey. 
Yes, yes. I'm afraid, Miss Teasy, you're very tired. We really should let her rest, don't you think so? No, but I... I uh, yes, just... I am rather tired, but thank you very much, Mr. Honey. Oh, you rang for the store to sit here. Well, yes. Yes, I did. I'm very sorry. I was only trying to help. I'm sure you were. Some other time, perhaps. You shouldn't have done that, Mr. Honey. Yes, it's quite sure. I, I, clear I shouldn't have. I'm sure you don't want to alarm people. You won't do it again, will no, you? No, no. No, I won't do it again. I will. You know about this, don't you? Yes, Captain Samuelson just told me. He... Well, it rather that you didn't speak to any of the other passengers. May I speak to you? Of course. I'd like to tell you what I was trying to tell Miss Teasdale. Well, do it. It will make you feel any better. Well, now, if it happens at this altitude, there'll be a little less than three minutes before we hit the water. Yes. Now, there's one place where a person could have a chance to survive the impact. It's in the men's room. <laughs> now, at the first sign of trouble, you go in there and sit on the floor with your back against the partition. Now, the partition's very rigid because the stove and the galley is bolted to the floor. Do you, you see? You're very observant, Mr. Honey. Yes, I am. Yes, I'm very observant. I tried to tell Miss Teasdale because I felt I owed her something. And now I, I want you to know. And I, I won't talk to anyone else. No one's worried about me like that for quite a while, Mr. Honey. But I think we're going to be all right. Well, no, just be calm. And please remember what I told you. Meanwhile, try to get some rest. Hmm? That's it, Mr. Honey. Here, now, let me fix your pillow. <laughs> Before we return with Act Two of No Highway in the Sky, here's our Lux Hollywood reporter, Libby Cullen. Reporting on Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's glorious new Technicolor production, Singing in the Rain, starring Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor, and Debbie Reynolds. The dance numbers are superb, particularly the Singing in the Rain number, where Gene Kelly dances and splashes his way along a rainy street. <laughs> because he's fallen in love with adorable Debbie Reynolds an irrepressible flapper who becomes one of the first talking picture stars. As a rhythm team, Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor are tremendous. They hoof through two comedy routines. Mm -hmm. And in contrast, the ballet episode is a vision of loveliness. Producer Arthur Freed has chosen ten songs, including Broadway Melody, You Are My Lucky Star, and Would You. They're all in Singing in the Rain. John, didn't Debbie Reynolds look exquisite in her close-up? Yes. Her breathtaking complexion certainly shows the new beauty that results from skin tonic action in Lux Soap Care. Girls, skin tonic action will work for you, too. You see, skin tonic action means Lux Care actually stimulates vital moisture within your skin. Vital moisture that makes your complexion smoother, fresher, with a dewier look, a younger look. Skin tonic action works real magic on dry skin. Yes, dry, flaky skin especially needs moisture from within. And that's just what skin tonic action of Lux Soap Care gives you. It works from within to make your complexion definitely smoother, definitely fresher. That's not just a promise. It's a scientific fact. Right, Libby. New tests prove dramatically that skin tonic action gives softer, younger beauty to any normal skin. So be guided by scientific evidence. Be guided by the Lux lovely complexions of glamorous screen stars. Try Lux Care now. Just one cake of Lux can make a thrilling improvement in your skin. Lux toilet soap and the beautifying benefits of skin tonic action are guaranteed by Lever Brothers Company. Now our producer, Mr. William Keeler. Act two of No Highway in the Sky, starring James Stewart as Theodore Honey and Marlena Dietrich as Monica Teasdale, with Evelyn Eaton as Marjorie. It's a few moments later. Mr. Honey is resting. Across the aisle of the dimly lighted plane, Marjorie Corder, the stewardess, is talking to Monica Teasdale. Well, I don't think it'll happen again, Miss Teasdale. He seems to be dozing now. What's the matter with that little man? I'm afraid he's got some rather odd ideas. He certainly has. He told me to sit on the floor in the men's room. <laughs> if that isn't an odd idea, I'd like to meet one. I think he was trying to tell you the best place to be if there were an accident. Is that what I really ought to do? I think he's right about it being the safest place. But if he's right about that, he may also be right about the tail falling off. Who is he? Some kind of a scientist, I think. Oh, but I assure you there's nothing to be alarmed about. Captain Now, Sanderson... listen, dear. The scientist says the plane is going to crash. The 
the captain says it isn't. Your vote doesn't count because you have to string along with the captain, so that leaves it a tie. And as far as I'm concerned... What's that? The motors, they, they don't sound the same. Oh, we've merely cut our inboard engines to save fuel. Why should it be necessary to save fuel? Well, all I meant was... Just a minute. If I'm going to meet my maker, I'd like to know about it. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to have a little talk with Mr. Honey. Miss Teasdale, please, I've, I've just got him quiet. Right now, I don't want him quiet. May I sit down, Mr. Honey? Oh, oh yes, of course, Miss Teasdale. When you came over before, I was only half awake and I only half heard. Would you like a cigarette? No, no, thank you. Now, about our crashing into the sea... Well, it's hard to say for sure, but I don't believe we've turned back. They must have told the pilot to maintain a course to Newfoundland. Then we are going to crash? I would say there's an excellent chance. I see. I don't see at all, of course. But the pilot should understand you. Why doesn't he turn back? Would it help if I talked to him? No, no, I don't think so. Besides, I think we're quite near the point of no return anyway. Point of no return. Yes, that's where it's, it's as short to go on as it is to turn back. Oh, oh. I thought you meant something else. Oh, funny. I would have thought I'd feel quite differently being right up against it like this. All these other passengers... Well, fortunately, I believe most of them are asleep, so... Makes you wonder which one you'd pick out to save if you were God. And which one wouldn't matter much, doesn't it? Oh, I, I don't know. I never thought much about things like that. No, you never had time, did you? You were so busy with your multiplication table. But you had a chance to play God for a little while. Why did you pick me out when you decided to save someone? Oh, but you ought to live. I mean, the, the work you do, you ought to keep on doing. Oh, the work. <laughs> no, I don't think I buy that. A few cans of celluloid and a junk heap someday. But you're a scientist. You are worth something to the world. I think I've picked you to be saved. Well, that's very nice of you, Miss Teasdale. I... But I, I think it'll be all right about me. Haven't you any family? Oh, my little girl. She's staying with neighbors until I get back. I, I, a little I mean... girl is worth a lot to come back to. Oh, yes. Yes. I... We're really very fond of one another. She's 12 now. She's much more soundly developed than most children her age. She really has a remarkable grasp of crystallography. Oh, that's very good, of course. Yes, yes. What is it? Oh, it, it's, it's quite fundamental. You see, crystallography... Has she, has she got a compact? A, 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 what? One of these things, a compact. Oh, oh, I don't know. Why? Never mind. That, that isn't it, it. No, that's not it. <sighs> Some more minutes and each one is kind of like a present, isn't it? You know what I was thinking about just then? All the people who will come to my funeral. That'll be quite an occasion. <laughs> Do you have a family, Mr. No, no, not even a husband at the moment. But there's my agent. <laughs> oh, my agent, he'll be very sad. He had five more years to go at 10%. And then there's Lauren Colvin. She'll cry the most. She'll give a beautiful performance, and then she'll try to get the part in the picture I was going to make. I suppose that's why I don't feel the way I should. I would have stopped working quite a while ago if I could have figured out what to do with myself. I was married three times, but it never came to anything. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it was all my fault. Maybe Providence is trying to tell me something. Maybe it took a first-class high dive into the middle of the Atlantic to make me quit. And maybe I'd rather it ended with a big splash. Oh, no. Miss Teasdale, you, you've made people happy you don't even know about. Why, like my wife, Mary. Do you know that she took me to see one of your pictures that last night before the bomb came? She, she talked a lot about it after we got home. Oh? You made that last night very happy for her. Now, uh, that's worth doing, Miss Teasdale. You know, when we used to go to pictures, we used to walk right out of them whenever Mary didn't like them, but we never walked out on one of your pictures. Mr. Honey, this is not exactly the best compliment I've ever had, but maybe it's the nicest. 
Well, that's why I had to tell you what I did. I'd, I have to do everything I can for you, don't you see? You mean it, too, don't you? Scientists are always so busy figuring out new things. Why don't you figure out a mascara that won't run? Hmm? Oh, well, I, I'm afraid that's a little out of my field. It's all right. I'll be as good as new in a minute. Thank you for holding my hand. Come in, Miss Gordon. Passengers, everything all right back there? Everything quiet, Captain. They're asleep, most of them. We're behind schedule, aren't we? Yes, hour and 20 minutes. Well, let them sleep. Coast is all closed in. Fog. We may have to sit up here till it breaks. Want some coffee? The only thing I want is to get this ship... Take a look to starboard, sir. Starboard? Well, well, well. Do I see lights down there, Mr. Dobson? Yes, sir. Looks rather pretty, don't you think? Radio Gander, tell them we've just sighted the coast. Uh, unfeathered two and three inches. Yes, sir. How long? About half an hour. I'll take that coffee now, Dobson. Right. Miss Teasdale. Miss Teasdale. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes. Sorry to awaken you. We're landing in about 20 minutes. We're that close? We're still in one piece? Yes, it's a lovely clear night. Oh, it is. The stars are out. Oh, I must have fallen asleep on your shoulder, Mr. Honey. Oh, well, that's all right. That's quite all right. I'm sorry you had to be so worried, Mr. Honey. How long will we be in Gander? Uh, about an hour, I imagine. Excuse me, please. Quite a night, Mr. Honey. I guess you must have multiplied somewhere where you should have divided. Well, Mr. Honey, this is Gander. Well, the stewardess asked me to stay here on the plane. She Mr. Said, Honey, this is Mr. Lund. He's in charge of all flights in and out of Gander. Yes, how do you do? How Mr. Do you... Lund, I want this aircraft inspected as no other's ever been inspected. Every ruddy inch of it. Yes, sir, we'll get out of the meeting. If, as I expect, this inspection is satisfactory, I'm refusing to carry Mr. Honey any further. Well, now, well, now, just a minute here, sir. I consider his presence aboard an unnecessary hazard. I'll arrange that all other flights leaving this airfield are adequately informed about him before they carry him. Yes, sir. And meanwhile, if there's an office or something in your building that's not being used... I'm going to Radio London, Mr. Honey. Pending their answer, you're staying here at Gander Airfield. Well, are you all right, Mr. Honey? It's a nice warm office, isn't it? Here, I hope you like bacon and eggs. Well, thank you. It's very nice of you, Miss Corder. What about the plane? Well, they've just about finished the inspection. Well, they won't find anything wrong. I told him that. I wish... People didn't think they knew everything. You mean you still believe it's going to crash? Yes, yes, I believe that. I... I suppose if they take off, Miss Teasdale will go too. I expect she will. I think she believed me for a little while last night, and then I don't think she did. Your eggs are getting cold, Mr. Honey. That plane in Labrador, I, I suppose there was a stewardess on that one too. Yes, I, I knew her very well. Couldn't you believe me, Miss Corder? You've been so very kind to me, and I, I, I... You ought to live and get married and bring up a family. You'd be very good at that. Well, thank you very much for that, Mr. Honey. You said that just about as nicely as anyone could. But I think everything will be all right. Captain Samuelson knows a great deal about aircraft. Well, I, I'd better be going. And you will eat, won't you? I... I won't lock the door if you promise not to speak to any of the other passengers. I won't. Well, goodbye, Mr. Honey. And please stop worrying. Well, that's about it, Captain. The safety locks are out and the landing gear, but apart from that, your aircraft is clear. You can pick up new locks in Montreal. There's no risk involved. No, of course not. Keep a man standing by the lever on taking off and landing, just so nobody catches a coat on it or something. Be rather awkward, you know, if the wheels retracted while you were still on the ground. Well, just sign us out and we'll be... What are you doing here, Mr. Honey? Captain, I just have... Mr. Honey, I'm flying this aircraft to Montreal. I want you to get off and stay off. Uh, Captain, you mustn't take this airplane off the ground. You can't do it. Believe me, mathematics is a very exact science. It'll be just like that crash in Labrador and the stewardess and all these people. Stop and get him off the no, plane. No, you can't do this. I won't allow it. Get away from that This level. plane has got to be... Oh, it just folded up. 
I pulled the lever and it just folded right up and sat down. Well, Mr. Honey, back in the office, I see. Only now there's an armed guard outside, isn't there? Mr. Honey, why did you do it? I just had to do it, that's all. I had to do it. They wouldn't listen to me. Well, there'll be quite a delay for everybody now, won't there? Yes, Mr. Honey, quite a delay. Mr. Honey, if you believe in something, you believe in doing something about it. Oh, yes. Hello, Miss Teasdale. Well, these things cost an awful lot of money. Oh, a tremendous amount of money. I, I don't know what they're going to do about it. I've never had any experience with anything like this before. I, I... should think nobody has. I think this is a kind of a world record. You didn't do it for yourself either, did you? No. We were leaving you behind, weren't we? Look, you better stay here, Mr. Honey. Some of the passengers are a little annoyed with you. Oh, yes. Well, I'll stay here. I'm under some sort of an arrest, I think. Well, I'll try to find out what happens next. Well, it's very nice of you not to be angry about the delay. Oh, it's worth it. You don't meet a world record every day. You know, there'll be quite a lot in the newspapers about this. Oh, oh dear, yes. Oh, that means my little girl will find out about it, too. Which I can't imagine what she'll think about me. Look, I'll probably be sent back to London now for reassignment. <laughs> would it help if I went to see your daughter? Oh, would, would you do that for me? Well, there's no telling what she'll hear, is there? Well, whatever she hears, I imagine she'll understand. Oh, she will? Well, frankly, Miss Corder, I wish I did. Come in, Mr. Scott, come in. Well, I understand you finally got through to Gander. Yes, sir, darling, it's true. Right down to the last glass of detail. Mr. Honey wrecked the plane. Mr. Honey dropped that reindeer right on its belly. It should interest all you gentlemen that in addition to frantic calls from the press, the ARB, the Treasury and the Home Office, I also heard from Sir David. Oh, dear. It is Sir David's belief that there isn't enough money in the Bank of England to pay for the damage done to British aviation by the implication of the safety of their aircraft. Furthermore, he refuses to fly Mr. Honey back to England. But Honey must be returned here at once, Sir John, for the inquiry. Sir David has contacted the RAF. He said they, at least, are equipped to take risks. Excuse me, sir. There's a Miss Monica Teasdale to see you, Sir John. Uh, Teasdale? Yes, the film star. First of all, Miss Teasdale, we're curious as to how you got back here so quickly. I came back with a crew, gentlemen. Something about having to return for reassignment, so I decided to come along. Now, about Mr. Honey. Ah, yes. Mr. Honey is expected here tomorrow night. The army has consented to bring him over in a bomber. Uh, Miss Teasdale, uh, if you can give us any idea of what really happened. They were going to take off for Montreal, although he told them they shouldn't. And the lever was right there, so he pulled it. You've never seen such a commotion in your life. I guess a thing like that hasn't happened before in the history of the world. No, fortunately, no. Have you known Mr. Honey long? No, no. I met him on the plane. He came to tell me that he thought we were in trouble. And what did he do? Explain his theory. He did, and I believed him. Did you understand it? Not a word. Well, then how could you? I mean, after all... I don't know a thing about mathematics, Sir John. But I know when a man knows what he's talking about. That funny little man is brave and kind and on the level. But they'll throw him to the wolves now, won't they? The wolves? They'll say he's a lunatic and let it go at that. Well, that's why I wanted to meet the people he worked for. I want to find out if you're going to stand by him. Somebody's got to, you know. We don't know whether Mr. Honey is right or wrong. But I assure you, nothing will be spared to get at the truth. We sincerely hope to find it on the side of Mr. Honey. Well, I don't think there was much need in my coming here. But I'm glad I did. We're indebted to you, Miss Teasdale. Isn't there anything I can do for him? His little girl. I thought that if I went to see her, maybe I could stop by just to see if she's all right. Oh, I think that would be very nice. She's staying with neighbors, I believe. If you don't mind coming with me, I'll look up the address. Thank you. Sir John, there's going to be trouble for Mr. Honey, isn't there? Yes, sir. I'm afraid so. Thank you again, and Goodbye. <laughs> Well, here he is, 
Sir John, when he got off the bomber, he went directly to... Now, Sir John, I protest. I protest very strongly. The vibration sheds under guard. They refuse to let me through. Now, why has my work been taken out of my hands? Please sit down, Mr. Honey. I'm not in the habit of going around wrecking things. You ought to know that. If you please. The Board of Inquiry has agreed to defer the hearing concerning your, um, uh, your conduct in Gander until your test in the shed has reached the 1,440-hour mark. The figure you yourself suggested. That figure was suggested and arrived at by the science of mathematics. Fact to remain that if your test proves your contention, the airline and everyone else will be extremely grateful to you. If it does not, or if we fail to get supporting evidence from Labrador... Well, how can I look for evidence in Labrador when I'm ordered back here? We sent someone else, Mr. Honey. Penworthy left yesterday. Penworthy? Oh, oh, very capable man, I approve. Thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Board of Inquiry plans to issue a statement. Something to offset all this ruinous publicity. That yours was the act of an irresponsible and unbalanced mind. They want the supporting opinion of qualified psychologists. In other words, they wish to test you, as well as that tail assembly. To see if I'm insane? Yes, that's right. Do you think I'm insane? No, I... I don't think so. I'd hate to have them look me over at the moment. You can refuse, you know. That's your privilege. No. No, I won't refuse. Let them pry and poke if they want to. And tell them I'll be in my office in the morning if they want to see me. Thank you. Well, I... If there's nothing else, I think I'll go home. We'll return shortly with Act Three of No Highway in the Sky. Have you ever wondered how a star is born? Well, my guest tonight is just the girl to tell you. She's the 20th century Fox starlet, Lux Lovely Virginia McGuire. Being groomed for stardom is work, Mr. Keeley. After winning a photo play scholarship, I studied at Pasadena Playhouse. Now I'm learning from the stars out at Fox, like Susan Haywood. You know, Susan plays Jane Froman in 20th Century Fox's new Technicolor musical, with a song in my heart. Yes, and the other wonderful stars are Rory Calhoun, David Wayne, and Thelma Ritter. You'll see the romantic story of Jane Froman's marriage to the pilot who saved her life. And how the courageous singer got off her hospital bed to entertain so she could pay for more operations. Jane Froman recorded 30 top tunes for With a Song in My Heart. Her voice is thrilling. So is Susan Hayward's sparkling complexion. Susan is devoted to Lux Soap Care with its newfound skin tonic action. Well, here in Hollywood, we think skin tonic action in Lux Care is the beauty news of the year. It makes complexion so much smoother and fresher. Skin tonic action actually stimulates moisture within your skin. It's this moisture within that gives your complexion dewy freshness. Yes, it's moisture from within that counteracts dryness, that makes skin look smoother, younger. Its benefits are really wonderful. Tests prove... Skin Tonic Action brings radiant new softness to any normal skin. Your own skin. So try Lux Toilet Soap Care now. Just cream in the rich lather, rinse warm, splash cold. You'll see an immediate improvement in your complexion. Mr. Kennedy, I love Lux for my bath, too. Naturally. The big bath size cake of Lux is Hollywood's way to all over loveliness. To the smoother shoulders smoother arms, so important with summer's bare fashion. Thank you, Miss McGuire. Girls tomorrow, get Hollywood's own fragrant white Lux toilet soap. Remember, nine out of ten screen stars are Lux girls. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. And this is WDAN in Danville, Illinois, the commercial news station. The curtain rises on Act Three of No Highway in the Sky, starring James Stewart as Theodore Honey and Marlene Dietrich as Monica Teasdale, with Evelyn Eaton as Marjorie. Well, Mr. Honey has wandered wearily back to his house, and here another surprise awaits him. Marjorie, the stewardess. So I, I thought I'd stay here with Elspeth because... 
Well, we didn't think you'd be back here till tomorrow. She's asleep now. Well, that's very kind of you, Miss Corder. She's such a sober little thing, isn't she? Was she worried about me? Yes, so was I. Oh, uh, did you see her presents? Presents? Miss Teasdale brought them. Miss Teasdale, is she here too? <laughs> no, but she brought her the loveliest things. Oh, and you should see the compact. Well, what did she want to do a thing like that for? I think you'd be surprised. Now, everything that's happened, it's my own fault. I have no one to blame but myself. You did think there'd be a crash, didn't you? Yes, but what I should have done is to offer my hypothesis to Captain Samuelson in an orderly manner. Let him make his own decision. How is anybody going to take my work seriously if I go around doing things like that? They're saying I'm crazy. I don't blame them. And if you had to do it again, you just let it go ahead and crash? <laughs> that's just the point. I, I, I probably would have done the same thing over again. I... I'm evidently quite a weak character, Miss Corder. Well, I, I expect you know what you're doing. Well, I'll phone for a taxi and say goodbye, Mr. Honey. Goodbye? I, I mean, I... Well, I, I, I could come back in the morning. Would you mind? Oh, no. No, I, I wouldn't mind. I'd like to. I'd like to be here to see how things turn out. Yes. Yes, Miss Corder. I, I, thank you. Thank you very much. Dale. Oh, come in, won't you? Oh, Mr. Honey's going to be so disappointed. Gone? I suppose he couldn't wait to get to Farnsboy this morning to see his playthings again. He was going to drop Elspeth off at school and then go on over there. I'd like to hear about it. Any coffee left from breakfast? Let's go in the kitchen. Oh, watch for the ironing board. I've been doing some pressing. Yes, I see. Mr. Honey's pan. <laughs> well, uh, I had nothing else to do and I... Well, it looks as though he wears one suit and goes to sleep in the other. That's very domestic. You're full of surprises. Here's your coffee. I hope you like it strong. Thanks. Well, what's he going to do? I... I just don't know. Funny that a kid like you would bother to see so much in anybody like him. It's not so funny, really. You get around being a stewardess. Well, this will take some thinking, won't it? Only now I don't have time for it. I'm leaving tonight for California. The studio's caught up with me. They want to get going. But what about all the things you talked about? Helping Mr. Honey to find an answer and everything. I meant it. Don't think I didn't, and I still do. I kind of go for that, Mr. Honey. Maybe it would have been the best chance I'll ever have to be a lot of things I'd like to be. Only, I suppose, you can't do a thing like this just a little bit. Mixing into other people's lives, I mean. You can start something that maybe you can't finish. <laughs> what got me was his being so anxious to save me for posterity. Well, I've decided to go back and give posterity another break. It won't hurt to wait a while and see how things work out. Oh, that box I brought, it's a dress for Elspeth. I saw it in the window and it just yelled to belong to her. Tell her I'll write, will you? Can't you wait long enough to see No, I don't think so. I might weaken. There's no use making anything of it. That's one thing you learn in my business. How to get off. I wish you wouldn't go. You're a nice kid, Marjorie. I have an idea you know what's going on. You might let me know. I'll get a price on a laboratory or two, just in case. Oh, about Elspeth. Yes? Keep on telling her how pretty and sweet she is, will you? It'll do her good. I will, Monica. Take care of yourself. And uh, thanks for the coffee. Good evening. I, I'm late, I know. I I should have let you know. It's all right, I... Mr. Honey, except I'm afraid that Elspeth has fallen asleep. What happened? Oh, several things. I, I saw the psychiatrist this morning. They, they showed me a lot of ink blots. <laughs> and these ink blots were supposed to make me think of tigers and elephants. All they made me think of was ink blots. <laughs> we, we discussed that for quite some time. And then? And then... And then two o'clock came. Two o'clock? My vibration tests. The 1,440 hours were up at two o'clock. Nothing happened. Nothing at all. 
My figures clearly indicated that the tail assembly should fail at two o'clock, and it didn't. And, and now what? Well, the board of inquiry meets in the morning, and I'll stand up and I'll explain my theory, and then I'll sit down and listen to them say that I'm insane. Perhaps I am. I'm not sure, you know. I, I just think that the truth is only that I've made a mistake somewhere in my work, and I must have time to run it down. But you see, there won't be any time, and I'll just sit there. I'll just sit there, and I won't say a word. I see. Everything just as it was, hmm? Yes, I, I'm rather glad it's all over. But you can't just sit there. If you believe something is right, you have to do it if you want to live with yourself. If you don't, you'll have to pay for it sooner or later, and so will Elspeth. Elspeth? Everything is to be just as it was for her, too. Yes, she was very glad to have it that way. She was very happy. No, oh, it's as simple as that. Well, I'll be running along, Mr. Honey. It's my last day, you know. I start my job again tomorrow night. Funny if they put me back on reindeer. No, no, but you mustn't. You... Supposing I did, would you let me? Never mind. I'm sorry I mentioned it. Good night, Mr. Honey. Elspeth, it's seven o'clock, dear. Good morning, Father. Yes, I've been awake for some time. Did the tail fall off? No, dear, it didn't. You mustn't worry about it. It will someday. Elspeth, is, is something the matter? No. I was just thinking about it's all being over. Teasdale's gone, and Miss Carter goes tonight, and newspaper people, and everybody wanting to talk to me at school. That sort of thing isn't very permanent, is it? It's like Christmas. Everybody very nice to everybody for a little while, but then it doesn't last, does it? Oh, I don't know, dear. Aren't they always nice to you at school? It's just that they don't talk to me very much as a rule because I'm different. It's like my intelligence quotient being too high. Father, I was thinking that maybe if I didn't go to school anymore, I'm sure to learn much more with you because there wouldn't be the other things to think about. Things being impermanent. <laughs> oh, Elspeth, dear, not... please, dear, don't cry. What's the matter, dear? What's the matter? I have just one thing more to say to this board of inquiry. Yes, sir, David. I submit that the kindest thing we can say about Theodore Honey is that his mind is unstable, filled with obsessions that can carry him to great extremes. I insist an immediate finding to this effect be issued by this board. Will I do anything? Now, oh, wait a minute. Now, now, here, now, Mr. Uh, now, what's your name? Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ch I've decided to say something. Now, I didn't invent the mathematics that made me believe what I did. And I still believe that there's some truth in my work, test or no test. And when you believe in something, that's what you've got to do, isn't it? If you want to live with yourself. All right. Now, well, the first thing I'm going to do is to resign right here and now so the Farnsburg establishment won't get mixed up in this thing. And then, every time a reindeer aircraft is going to take off, and it shouldn't, I'm going out there and I'm going to wreck it. Now, you may put me in jail. You may put me in jail. But the, the newspapers wrote a whole lot about me when I wrecked that one in Gander, and they'll write more about me here. And people just won't get on those airplanes. And I'm going to tell you something else. The minute something does happen to one of those airplanes, you're going to have to think of something better to say than anything I've heard out here this afternoon. That's all. Any other statements? That's all. Goodbye. <laughs> And then Sir David, he uh, said I was crazy, and I got up, and I made a few remarks, and then I, well, I just walked out, and I came home. Then it's all over? It's all over. That's all. Thank you for stopping by, Miss Carter. It's very nice but, of you. But those few more remarks, what did you tell them, Mr. Honey? Oh, several things. I told them plenty. I resigned, too. You didn't. Resigned. Well, I couldn't just sit there, could I? But what are you and Elspeth going to live on? Have you any money at all? Money? Why, why I don't know exactly how much. There's a bank book in the drawer there, I think. 
You don't know how much money you have? No, no, I suppose I should, shouldn't I? But I... Less than four pounds. Just look at this bank book. You haven't made a deposit for months. Well, just what do you do with your money? Hmm? Well, well, I think there's, there's some in the back shelf there. Here, yes, here, you see? Now, here, uh, there's a box on the desk here. Sometimes I put the checks in that box. You see that? Oh, no, no. But what's, uh, what's wrong? Your salary checks, we'll just look at them. January, March, and this one from, from last November. Well, you have lots of money, Mr. Honey. I, I, I shouldn't have worried, should I? You don't need anyone. Oh. Well, you know, one of these days I'm going to take time out and go down to that bank. I... <laughs> oh, but you do need some way. <laughs> Miss Carter, what what is what seems to be now? You're not going to start to cry here now, are you? I I can't go away and leave you. It isn't safe. You've got to have somebody looking after you. I'm going to marry you and live here, whether you have a job or not. Hey, you mean uh, you're 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 going to you, you <laughs> Miss Miss Carter? Would you care to join me in a glass of sherry? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And so I came back here to say goodbye, Mr. Scott. There are several papers and reports I have to turn over to you. Very decent of you, Mr. Honey. Oh, yes, and this is Miss Carter here. She asked me to marry her, and I think I'd better. I'm... He really should, you know. Well, uh, how do you do? I mean, congratulations. Now, we can't stay long here. We're picking up my little girl at school, and we're going... What it, what, my test, the, you're continuing the vibration test. What, what it, why? I don't really know, Mr. Honey. There's been no Mr. order. Honey! Mr. Honey! Oh, that's all right, Sir John, now. It's all right. I haven't wrecked a thing. Mr. All Mr. right. We need to have from Penworthy in Labrador. He found the wreckage of that tail assembly. Oh, well, good for him. He said he broke off the plane, no question about it. Exactly as you claim, Mr. Honey. Is that so? Well, that's very interesting. Isn't that only half the news? That plane you wrecked in Gander was repaired. They made the flight to Montreal. Oh, yes, but I still maintain the... A few minutes later, thing. while the plane was being taxed to the hangar, oh, well, I could hardly believe it. The tail assembly broke in two. Why, 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 yes. But how did you ever know? Mr. Honey, you have been completely vindicated. No, 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 I haven't. Not at all, not at all. At the end of this shed is a tail assembly that should have collapsed yesterday. I said it would, and I was wrong. As long as that tail assembly remains intact... There's still no positive proof that I have operated. That I've. Mr. Honey, it happened! There's no positive proof now! It should have happened yesterday. I, I've been deplorably inaccurate. Somehow, somewhere, I've made a mistake. I've. 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 Now wait. Now wait. Wait, just this shed. It's warm in here, isn't it? Marjorie, aren't you warm? Yes. Aren't you warm, yes, I Marjorie? Am. Yes, yes you, no, you aren't. You're hot. Isn't it hot in here? Yes, it you're is. honey. You're, you're not feverish. Temperature. It's the temperature. Oh, dear. Temperature is a variable factor. That plane and gander had been flying in the tropics. This test was in a heated shed. It would have collapsed on schedule if I'd lowered the temperature 40 degrees. Oh, Sir John, I'm a fool. I'm just a fool, sir. Are John. you now? No, Mr. Honey. You're a buffin. Capital B O S F I N. Now, what do you suppose he meant by that? <laughs> Mr. Keeley will return with our stars for a curtain call in just a moment. But first, an exciting announcement from the makers of Lux Flakes. Would you like to know the Hollywood way to beauty and charm? Now you can have the beauty secrets that are used by the stars on and off screen. Beauty secrets that will show you how to make your eyes look larger, brighter. How to make your lips luscious, inviting. Hollywood tricks of makeup, figure allure, complexion care, star bright hair. All these secrets and more are yours in the new Lux book, Hollywood's Own Secrets of Charm, for just one Lux Flakes box top and ten cents. Right to Lux Flakes, Box 73, New York 46, New York. Just think, a 32-page beauty and charm book containing 143 authentic Hollywood secrets never before printed. 
secret that will help you play a starring role in your own life. Just send one Lux Flakes box top and ten cents for each book to Lux Flakes, Box 73, New York 46, New York. That's Lux Flakes, Box 73, New York 46, New York. But hurry, the supply is limited. This Lux Flakes offer is good only in the United States, Alaska, and Hawaii. Send for your Lux book, Hollywood's own secrets of charm, tonight. Learn the Hollywood way to beauty and charm and play a starring role in your own life. Now here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. And here they are coming forward to acknowledge your applause. James Stewart and Marlene Adisa. <laughs> well, Marlena, what are you doing these days? Right now, I'm looking for a baseball game. Any particular one? Yes. I've just seen Dan Daly as Dizzy Dean in the 20th Century Fox Brick to the Pride of St. Louis. And now I wish to see Mr. Dean pitch. Well, De- uh, Dean doesn't pitch anymore, Marlena, but uh, instead, why don't you see Deadline USA starring Humphrey Bogart? And then you can go looking for gangsters. All right, Jimmy. I shall look for the pictures as soon as I return to New York. And by the way, don't miss the magnificent new Lever House, which has its formal opening this week. Oh, isn't that the building I recently saw in a magazine, almost entirely made of glass? Yes, Jimmy, that's because it has 1,404 windows, but no windowsill. So it looks just a shining block of glass 21 stories high. I have a wonderful view of my New York apartment. <laughs> 